Hello, this bite-sized session is all about singing minor sevenths. Before we do that though, please let me remind you, let me remind you that if you like sight singing stuff and want to find out more, visit vocalvista.com for more information about my fantastic online sight singing course. Also, this video and the in-context exercise we're going to look at will be on YouTube in the next few days. So head over to the YouTube channel, click subscribe and click on the bell because then you'll get notifications of whenever I put material up there. So on with the session, really good one tonight. Minor sevenths. Now, guys, these singing minor sevenths is not the, I'm going to say to you, it's not as complicated as singing major sevenths. Singing minor sevenths is easier and I'm going to tell you why. First thing we're going to look at is what is a minor seventh and what's a minor seventh chord because it's really important you know the chord because then you can find out where you fit in it and you can find out where your part lies. Okay, so what you're going to see on the screen now is the scale of C minor. Now over the notes of the scale I've written some numbers I don't deal when I'm talking about sight singing, I don't talk in numbers, I don't say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because you know what? No other musicians talk like that. Pianists don't, guitarists don't, flautists don't, no one else talks in numbers. So as a sight singer, you need to speak everyone else's language and you should because it's the proper language of music. So why have I written numbers over the top of some of the notes here? What I've done is highlight the notes that make up the chord of C minor 7. Right, a chord, a basic chord, some people call it a triad. A basic chord is 1, 3 and 5 of the scale. So if you're in C minor, we're talking C, not D, E flat, not F, G. But the moment you're talking about minor sevenths, we basically need to add the seventh. So C, E flat, G, not A, that's the sixth, but the seventh, which is B flat. So I've written down here, C, E flat, G, B flat, C. Now I have written an eight above the top C. There's a reason for that. We're gonna come back to that, okay? But basically, actually I could tell you now really, the seventh, if you think of the tonic note of a scale, so if we're in C minor, C can be called one, but C can also be called eight, the octave above. So when we're talking about the sevenths, sometimes it's easier to think of that top note as eight and come down a note. You'll see, we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about it later on. But the basic construction of a minor seventh chord is root, third, fifth and seventh. That's it. Now I'm going to play it for you and you're going to see on the screen CM7. A little m means the chord is minor. Okay, so what that CM7 above the first bar you're looking at now means is it's the chord of C minor 7. I'm going to play it for you. And then the whole thing together. That's the chord of C minor 7. I'm just going to play the chord of C minor. Listen. Now I'm going to add the 7th. That's the note I've added. Let me play a C major. C minor. Full C minor. Now C minor 7. There's an added note in there. Now that can take a little bit of time for your ears to hear it and you're thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I didn't quite catch that. Well, first of all, if you didn't quite catch it, please watch this video again on YouTube tomorrow, okay? Or I think it's going to be tomorrow. It might be the day after when we upload it. But get your ears used to hearing that chord. Now, as for singing it, I am going to tell you why it's easy. The next thing you're going to see is a little exercise, okay? I am going to play it for you. Now, as a singer, you might recognize this pattern. Let me play it a little bit more musically. Here goes. It might be a riff you have sang. Now, what did I play? 
I actually played the minor pentatonic scale coming down, but I don't want you to take that on board. I don't want you to think, oh my word, what has she just said? Don't do that, okay? I'm gonna look at minor pentatonics in another video, but what I wanna to say to you is, if I took out the last note of the first bar, an F, what I would end up with is the minor seventh chord coming down. So I'm gonna play that little riff again. I'm gonna miss the F out, listen. Sing it with me. Okay, that. We're kind of used to singing that little riff, that pattern. You've just sang the minor seventh chord coming down. Now this is a pretty similar actually, because I if you any of you watched, um, hopefully you have, hopefully you have watched my video on chromatic movement. I said to you, it's much easier when you're singing a chromatic scale to come down it first than it is to go up it. And this is kind of similar, purely because it's a pattern we're used to singing, okay? But basically, you're singing the eighth, the top note of the chord, or one, it can be called one or eight, seven, five, three, one, seven, one. That's what you're singing. You're actually singing the minor seventh chord pattern. Now I'm gonna do it in another key. The next exercise is exactly the same, but it's B minor seven. So if B is one, or at the top of the scale, we could call it eight as well. What's number seven? It's A. So if there's an A leaping out here in this little exercise, you're singing the seventh, and there is the second note you're singing, and the fourth note you're singing is the seventh. But what I'm gonna do is just play this. Now don't worry about reading this. We're gonna read this in a minute. I'm just gonna sing this, and then you're gonna sing it with me. Two, three, four. Go and sing it with me. Now it's not that difficult to find the seventh. When we found the major seventh, it was a little harder, guys. Okay, now actually, let me just play another little riff. Have a go at singing that. Go on. And how about this one? Okay, that is eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. That's what it is. You're singing the minor seventh. Now, I said to you, I don't like using numbers, but to describe this movement, it's fantastic because what I'm showing you here is no matter what key you're in, you're okay singing a minor seventh shape. Now, I showed you on a previous slide what the chord looked like all stacked up together. You're never gonna be asked to sing that, okay? You're just gonna be asked to sing single notes. So, you need to be aware of the seventh. Now, let's move on to the in context exercise because I can pull it to bits and I can describe it a lot better. So, we're gonna move on to the in context exercise for tonight. Fantastic little tune. Now, a little bit different from normal because in this in-context exercise, the main part I'm focusing on is the lower line. Those of you out there who are good sight singers, I know there's a couple of you, good sight singers, you can busy yourself with the top line if you want. We'll do that most probably on the third pass through, but the rest of us who are happy to try and figure out minor sevenths, we're doing the bottom line now. I've explained what a minor seventh chord is. You sang around it. You've most probably sang a couple of riffs that you thought, thought to yourself, I've heard that, I know that riff. I didn't realize I was singing around a minor seventh chord, but I know that riff. I also snuck the word minor pentatonic scale in there. Don't worry about that, but that's kind of what you're singing as well. Singers, we love to improvise around that scale. So that's why you're familiar with that scale. And therefore you're kind of really familiar with minor seven movement. But let's look at our piece of music. So we need to start recognizing the notes now. 
We're going to do our routine for reading, something I do all the time on Sing by Sight. It just calms you down. It makes you take information in in an ordered way so as it takes any little hassles, any little stresses you might have, gets rid of them. You pick up a piece of music. You say to yourself, I don't know what I'm going to read, but I know the process I'm going to go through to read it. OK, so here goes. First thing we see is the treble clef. Perfect. We know that. Next thing we see is one sharp. It's always going to be F sharp. If there's one sharp, it's F sharp, always. F sharp is the key of G major or it's the key of E minor. This is one of the first times we've looked at minor key signatures, actually, guys. So this is really exciting, this one. I really like this session. We're in E minor. If you're not sure, what's the first chord? E minor seven. What's the last chord? E minor seven. Guys, you're not in G major. You're in E minor. The next thing you look at is 4-4. Four, four. OK, now on our routine for reading, the next thing you look at is the rhythm. I'm not paying tons of attention to the rhythm tonight, but I'm going to work through it with you just to show you what I would do. OK, so I would say to myself, great, I've got two bars empty at the beginning. Fantastic. I can concentrate there on hearing my key note. My first um, bar three, the first bar I sing in is two half notes. Great. That's fine. Two counts each and a quarter note, quarter note rest. Two eighth notes, quarter note rest. Moving on, bar five, I've got a dotted half note that gets three counts onto a quarter note, which just gets the final count of that bar. Then quarter note, quarter note rest, two more quarter notes. Then on a piece of music like this, I would say stop. Is there any repetition? Now, the way I have to write this music, guys, because it's on a screen and it's landscape, so it's not fantastic because the bars don't really marry up. But if you look at bar three and bar seven, the bottom line, we're looking at the bottom line now, you'll see it's the same rhythm. Bar four and bar eight, the same rhythm. Bar five and bar nine, not quite the same, but bar six and bar 10, and in fact, bar 11, they're all the same. There is repetition. You get loads of repetition in contemporary commercial music, guys. Loads of repetition. Look for it, okay? Rhythmic repetition, melodic repetition, lyric repetition. You get loads of it, okay? Please also note first time bar and second time bar. We've looked at that before. Next thing I would look at is the notes. Now, I'm going to be a bit careful here because I'm going to say to you, we are in E minor. Our first note is E. So what I'm going to do is move through it quite quickly, as I would in a routine for reading. I'm going to say it's E down to D. That's great. I'll just move down or in step down the next note, then back up in bar four. And then the next note in bar four was repeated. And then I moved up in step. Then bar five, I've moved up. Then the note repeats and bar six, it comes down. Then the note repeats down, down. And bar seven is the same as bar three note wise. And in fact, how am I looking? Oh, yes, I would look for repetition. Bar four is the same as eight. If there's rhythmic repetition, there's generally going to be melodic repetition as well. OK, generally. Bar five and bar nine aren't the same, but I'm just still moving in step. Gosh, that's really nice. Bar six and bar 10 and bar 11 are the same, just moving in step. Now, my eyes spotted straight away when I said to you, E minus the first chord, E minus seven's the last, E minus first, seven's the first chord, E minus seven's the last chord. You're in E minor, guys, all those few minutes ago. Straight away in my head, I said, minor sevenths. And what I would do now is start looking for minor sevenths. Because we have just gone through it with you note wise, okay? I've just gone through the movement note wise and it's up and down and it's straightforward, it's straightforward. And you might think that's all right. But then think to yourself, hang on, are any of the notes I'm being asked to sing, are they minor sevenths? Because if they are, I might come to sing them and I might not hear my minor seventh and I might get pulled onto the tonic or I might get slide down to the fifth. I might not want to hang on to that less obvious minor sevenths. So I'm going to prepare myself. Am I singing any minor sevenths? Right. Now, remember what I said about eight and seven. OK, eight. So we're in E minor. Now, for chords, guys, you look at them chord by chord by chord. I'll tell you what I mean. E minor seven. E is one and it's eight. What's the seventh? Is D. Are you singing any Ds in the first bar? 
Yes, you are. You're singing E down to D. So straight away, you can say to yourself, great, I'm singing minor seventh movement. I know it because I recognize it from all the riffs Ema played before. Then you move up into bar four, just moving up, moving up in step. Bar five, you look and you say, it's B minor seven, the chord. If B is one and B is eight, what's seven? Seven is A. Am I being asked to sing any A's? Yes, I am. My whole bar is A. So bar five, I am on the minor seventh. Now, this type of information, guys, is fantastic. If you can equip yourself with this type of information and knowledge before you've even started singing, it's fantastic. Sometimes what happens is you're given a piece of music and you're asked to sing it straight away and you don't have time to do all this little prep like we're doing. So you kind of might slip up and you think, I have to remember that bar where I went wrong. And then you finish it, you go back and think, why did I go wrong? And then you look and you go, ah, the chord's B minor seven and I'm singing A, I'm singing the seventh. I think that's why I went wrong because I didn't want to sing the seventh. Okay, next bar, A minor seven. So A is one, A is eight. What is seven is the note before A. It's G. Am I being asked to sing G's? Yes, of course you are. Guys, I've written you this exercise for a reason, okay? I'm trying to get you to practice minor sevenths, so you're going to be singing them everywhere, okay? So yes, you are. Bar six, you're singing G, then you sing another G, and then you're coming down. Now, I've told you bar three is the same as bar seven, bar four is the same as bar eight, Bar five is not quite the same as bar nine. It's only a slight difference, okay? And then the rest is repeated. So there is repetition. Now, one other thing before I want to, um, want to go through this piece for the first time with you. Please look at the chord of bar four and then look at the chord of bar eight. I've played the chord, I've written the chord of bar four is E minus seven. The chord of bar eight is C major seven, really similar. Because I wanted to show you a piece of music doesn't just have to have minor seventh chords and you can have any chord, you could have any chord on the planet thrown into a piece of music. So I've thrown a major seventh chord in there, but your part, your, the bottom line still works with a major seven chord, okay, C major seven. I just wanted to maybe get you to listen to that different chord texture as we go along. Now, the backing for tonight. What have we got? We've had all sorts going on with backings, haven't we? Um, we had our famous uh, Chicago Roxy Hart backing the other week. Fantastic. Tonight, I've gone a little bit more up to date with the accompaniment, a little bit more kind of techno, maybe. What I'm going to say to you, though, is your minor sevenths aren't that clear on the part. I help you, I do help you, the piano plays them, but there's an annoying bell part that doesn't help you. It's because you need to be independent, guys. You need to learn to hold your line. Now, if any of you haven't checked out my fundamentals, please head over to fundamentals number one, holding the line. And in the description underneath, click on the um, click for more info, click on there because down underneath that you have a link to an exercise, a fantastic exercise where you can practice holding your line. OK, so head over to that because you need to you might need to do a little bit of prep work and also maybe think about doing the one on tension notes as well because of the clashes. Hold your line and be strong with tension notes. OK. We're going to have a listen to the part. I'm going to try and do as little talking as possible to let you hear it, but we're following the bottom line. Here goes. Let's have a go at listening to it the first time through. Two, three, four, subdivide, and two, and three, and four. Now listen to your key chord. Okay, there's your key note, so that's your note, and... There's our note.
Okay, can you hear that mildly annoying bell line? That bell line is not playing your note. That bell line is playing the root of the chord. So in bar five, for example, they're playing a B. And I need you to sing an A. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, while you're hearing that in the part. Now, what I'm going to tell you to do this time, we're going to have a go at singing it. What I'm going to tell you to do in the intro, the click, two bars click, always two bars click. What I want you to do the first bar is feel the pulse, two, three, four. The second time you subdivide it to feel the eighth notes, the quavers, some of you out there will call them quavers. One and two and three and four. And then you hear the tonic chord. Bam. In the first bar, you get that tonic note. And then in the second bar, what I want you to do is go do 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 ba, and then you're in. You've done a little prep in the second bar of music, okay? You've got yourself ready for singing those seventh notes. Let's have a go at it again, and let's just put a little bit of that in, and this time we're going to sing along. Here goes. Two, three, four, one, two, and three and four. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can we start that again, please, Rob? Sorry. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so there's your note. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Okay, now you've got to get those notes, those sevenths, dead in tune and rock solid. Now this time, I'm going to have a look at the top line. Wow. The top line, listen guys, it's just a little ditty I wrote. The problem with the top line is it kind of dovetails around the melody. So what I'm going to do is just go through the top line this time. Same lyrics both times. You guys out there who are singing the sevenths, you might find this a little bit difficult. I've given you an easy rhythm on the sevenths part because I want you to be solid with your notes. I'm not trying to test you with your rhythm, but the top line, I am pushing you with your rhythm. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go through it one more time. Well, twice more actually, but this time through it, I am going to sing the top line. So any of you guys who've been checking that out and you want to check if you're correct, work with me now. Those of you who are happy to just concentrate on nailing and really centering those seventh notes, you stick on the bottom line. I will do your part one more time after this, but this time through, it's the top line. Here goes. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. and do, do, do. There's the chord. And do it. How did you get on? <laughs> it's not that easy, actually, okay? I haven't done much um, repetition in your part, okay? So that's a really nice workout for you more advanced sight singers out there. Okay, I am going to go through the part one more time, and this is to work on the sevenths once more. So, guys, pitch is the word I haven't used yet, and I'm going to use it now because by now you should be strong with your part. You should be okay to move up in step. You're just moving up and down in step. 
in step means the next note up or the very next note down. You should be good with that movement now. So now it's pitch. You're going to concentrate on singing your notes in tune. So you really need to isolate them, guys. Let's just have a look at that first bar. and bright and when you're singing up to the next notes really really on top of all your notes especially your sevenths right here goes last time through guys let's get a bit of feeling into it let's get a bit, a bit of a performance going on our minor sevenths here goes okay Take a bow, darlings. Take a bow. Right. So, listen, what we've looked at tonight. I've explained what minor seventh chords are. They're your normal triad, root third fifth, but with the seventh added on. The seventh of the chord, it's, it's in the bar of the bar. It's not just the key signature. Every chord, the seventh of that chord. So, if you were in D minor seven, if you saw the chord of D minor seven and it's notated D little m seven, that's D minor, the little m means minor, D minor seven, you think to yourself, okay, D is the first note. It's also the eighth note if I got the scale. So, what's the seventh? The seventh is C. Am I reading any C's anywhere? I might be because it's the minor seventh chord and that's the kind of feature note is C. Oh, yes, I am. There's a C. Fantastic. I'm not going to be thrown because I know where it is and I know the sound, the texture I need to be used to. And then the other thing, like I said, in the introduction, that's a really good tip. So you've got the introduction going and you can find your tonic note. Ooh, and the next bar. Um, the song that's coming to mind straight away, I really don't know why, is Donna Summer's Hot Stuff. Sitting here reading, that's it, that's coming to mind, okay? Do, 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 do. I'm sure there's much more appropriate and relevant tunes, but that's the one that's come to mind. That's the tonic seventh, the tonic minor seventh. That's that type of movement. And it's a movement that you will be really used to. So hopefully you're used to hearing that note and feeling where you sit in the harmony. And then, as I say, you're looking at your part. You're looking to see, am I singing minor sevenths? I am. That's okay. I'm a tone away from the tonic, a whole tone away from the tonic. But you know what? I'm all right with that because these riffs that I sing all the time, it's that movement. That's what it is. Okay, guys, you've seen, you can recognize the notes. You know how to make it up. You know how to recognize them. You know how to sing them enjoy it all. This exercise will be on YouTube in the next couple of days. Wow! So we've had a little bit of a whirlwind tour through minor sevenths. But as I say, exercise and this video is going to be on YouTube in the next couple of days. So head over to the YouTube channel, subscribe. I'd love to have some more, some more subscribers and click on the bell so that you, no, no, you get notification basically of when I put stuff up there. And if you've enjoyed what we, I've worked on in this uh, bite-sized session tonight, please head over to vocalvista.com. Check out my online sight singing course. It's jam-packed with fantastic material. There are over 700 practice exercises, guys, covering every element of sight singing, going into so much more detail than I can on these bite-sized sessions. 
and there's also a free trial. Sign up for the free, uh, gosh, can't get my words out. Sign up for the free 14 day trial and, and see what it's all about. Check it out, guys. There's loads of material even in the free trial. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. This, um, this session tonight was another request from the Sing by Sight community, which was fantastic. Thank you very much, Claire, for suggesting minor sevenths. If any of you out there have got something else you'd like me to look at, please send me a message. I'm only too happy to talk about different elements of sight singing and to write exercises. So do keep in touch. I love hearing from you all. And take care until the very next Sing by Sight session. Bye-bye.